Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So, a few days ago there was an epic sunrise and there were some epic conditions, but I made such a big mistake. And what I wanna do is tell you a little bit about it, why I made it, and then how you can rectify it, because it's a simple thing, um, and it makes a really big difference to when you're shooting sunrises. So first of all, let's go back a couple of days to the end of a storm that came through the UK and what were the most amazing snow conditions I've ever seen near where I live. Morning everybody and fantastic to see you all again in this amazing um, winter wonderland we've got here in, in England at the moment. So I've come here to photograph sunrise at a location that I think could be quite spectacular, but I'm a little bit late, so I've got to rush. Um, coffee is most important. Chocolate bar. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so I've got this epic sunrise here. I'm just too late, I'm too late. Big, big mistake. Right, anyway, I've got a little bit of a composition here with this wall. Um, so I'm going to put a wider angle lens on. I'm going to take the shot and then I'm going to come back and explain a little bit more about it. But, oh my God, the sky's epic. I'm going to have to take the shot now. I'll see if I can put you somewhere so you can see me. Let me go a little bit closer. There we go. Right, those trees aren't there. So I'm just going to move out and go in the landscape. Yeah, so right, what, what I've got here is, you can probably just see that I've got this scene over here. Um, and what I'm trying to do is, is just, um, I'm not talking very well. <laughs> this is the worst video ever. So I'm trying to just get a line down to there. And then I want some of that distance in there because I think that it's pretty nice over there. There's a little bit of mist. Um, yeah, this looks really, really good. Right, I've got to take the photo and just forget about the video at the moment. Just going a little bit further up and I think I found something. And it's one thing that you can easily miss if you just walk walk past it. So if you just look down here, I'll just edge you down a little bit there, you can see that there's just this small little bit of, you have to be careful walking here, it's so slippery. <laughs> but the small, this smaller element of curvature with perfect snow. And I feel like that down there is what creates such a, a nice foreground. I think I might be just a little bit late for the best light. Such a shame, but um, it's still pretty good. And um, yeah, I've got my wide angle lens on and I'm just gonna stick with this composition, I think, and now and maybe fly my drone a little bit. Because if I rush around anymore, I think I'll just be sh shooting lots of different things and not find something that's spot on, really. I should have got here at least half an hour earlier. Big mistake, big mistake. Oh, anyway, still beautiful. I found another little spot down here, which is got, it's quite deep snow I've had to come through to sort of wade in. There's a bit of a drift on the wall here. And um, then there's this tree at the end you can see. So this wall drift, I've got reasonably close to, probably not as close as the other images. You can see that it just looks amazing. And yeah, I'm just being, the only thing I don't like about it really is that 
the trees sort of crossing that horizon in in the distance and um there's not a lot I can do about that though i feel like if the light just came out it might just help the situation a little bit but um yeah there's not a lot i can do about that which is a shame but that's what it is and it doesn't get better than this so Okay, so that was the um, world's shortest um, landscape photography vlog. <laughs> so I messed up big time. I should have got here way, way earlier. The thing is, in conditions like this, where you're usually trying to use the reflected light on the snow, you want to get here at least probably, you want to be in position 45 minutes. So composition set up 45 minutes. So you need to get, giving yourself half an hour 45 minutes to hike you probably need to be arriving you know about half one and a half hours before if you've got a 45 minute hike and i arrived 30 minutes before which wasn't good i was just speaking to a fellow photographer actually and he said the same so it wasn't just me okay morning everyone again and um yeah, I'm much earlier this morning. So I've got a hike of about 50 minutes and it's two hours before sunrise. So I'm hoping that I'll get there with at least probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour before sunrise. So I'm much better prepared than I was two days ago. The problem is the wind is howling. So there might not be much talking on this vlog. <laughs> we'll see how we go, but it is Quite brutal weather I think um, so I've got waterproofs um, and always take extra clothes so I've got some over pants as well pretty well prepared I think um, I've got my satellite phone as well just in case anything goes wrong right I think that's everything. Get the keys. Oh, let's go. So a lot of people speak to me about hiking in the dark and how one, is it dangerous or um, scary or whatever. I mean, it's a bit scary you know, when you're on your own in the dark, there's no doubt about it, but I don't think it's too dangerous because you've got a really bright head torch, which is illuminating me at the moment. I've taken it off my head so you can see me. Um, and if you have a good map and you can follow your route or you've been there before, then I think it's fine. So walking and hiking is always dangerous. You could stumble, you could trip, you might be on your own. But I feel like if you do it in the morning, it's probably safer than if you do it in the evening because obviously it's going to get light fairly quickly. So that's why I like doing it in the morning. Right, I'll speak to you when I'm halfway up. I'm at the bottom at the moment still. I've gone about half a mile so need to get going get my head torch and get further up there oh my word this is hard <laughs> i'm going quite quick so it's about an hour and 30 minutes till sunrise and you can feel the wind a little bit now i think as i get over this next brow it's going to be all break loose you can see there's a bit of clearing there the sun is going to rise from over there down the valley oh if it's just days like this it'll be fantastic Right, I've got about another 150 metres of ascent. I reckon about 30 minutes. Oh, the wind's getting up, but um, I think there's definitely going to be a little bit of a gap. I'm a little bit worried about my tripod. I've got my leg, so it's pointing um, sort of parallel with the wind, the, the lead leg, which is a, still not safe, but a better way of putting your tripod because it can't pivot as easily over that leg. Um, so, and I've got my bag hung on it. The moon's out. I can see Grasmere over there. It's just going to get windier and windier. God, I love this. This is amazing. Doesn't get better. They ever get better than things like this. Oh, it's windy now. Right, it's going to get me back to the wind. Okay. So you can see the two sort of tops up there. So I've got here an hour to spare. So it's still pretty dark. I've now just got to fit, find somewhere a bit sheltered and then just watch the light. I know a composition that I'm going to take here, hopefully, but um, 
Unfortunately, there's a slight band of cloud on the horizon. So sunrise is effectively going to be a bit later for me in terms of actual light and just hope that the, the, the wind doesn't blow the clouds any worse. Oh my God, it's getting windy. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm at the top now, and you can see all these jagged rocks. It's really spectacular up here. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more atmosphere on the mountains, because yesterday when I came up in the morning, I'll show you a bit of footage here, to a different hill. It was really misty and mysterious, but I think the wind's blowing it all off, unfortunately. But it's still good. It's still pretty epic. It's a question, I want to I shoot the mountains up there. It's actually not windy here, I've got a bit of shelter, so. But I don't think I'm going to get that early light. Ah, shame. But if I'm not here, I have no chance of getting it. So I did the hardest thing, which is get up, get out, and hike up the mountain. And actually it was fairly easy, really. It's a, it's a small hike. Right, it's time for a coffee. Oh. Oh, that's nice. And hot. <sighs> I think the wind might be dropping, actually. Um, not sure, though. It doesn't seem quite as windy. I might just be in a little bit of a dip. Sometimes you can get just a little bit of shelter where you don't imagine it, but yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so I've got a, an interesting composition here. There's this sort of foreground rock here that sort of goes in the opposite direction to those rocks over there. It's just still, how long is it? Still half an hour before sunrise. So, um, but there's a tree just coming out of the rocks over there, which you can just catch as well. It's, um, it's quite a long exposure. It's just a question of lining everything up. I've just moved things a little bit so that I can get um, the lake just to fit nicely into, into, the, into the scene. Um, and it looks pretty good. Um, I could probably get the moon as well, actually, if I went vertically. So I might try to go vertically as well, see if I can get the moon. And um, oh, the clouds are lighting up behind me there as well. So it's starting to kick off. <laughs> but I've got time. That's the thing, I've got time. I'm not rushing, not rushing at all. Okay, so I've got um, my 24 to 70 lens on here, and basically I am shooting directly into where the sun's rising, so there's a huge amount of dynamic range. If you just have a look, if I just switch this on and um, record this, you can see that I've just increased the brightness here, but you can see that I've got these rocks down here, um, and then going through, to this hill and then this little tree over there and then the lake here and then the sun set over there but if I just um, if I just drop the ISO you can see that I need to drop it quite a long way before I start to get the light in the in this in the sky there this is going to be um, my, my imagination for this in terms of how I'm going to edit it is it's going to be um, quite dark in the foreground um, because I don't want to brighten up too much I've, I've got this sort of feeling of you know this just pre sunrise shot with a little bit of light hitting the rocks and um, yeah I think it I think it looked really good <laughs> I'm quite excited about it it's so hard in this wind um, I think the light over on these hill hills and these clouds over here are pretty good as well So you can see over here that um, there's a, a tarn over there with a river running down it. I was hoping for the light to sort of come through, but there's just, it's, it's just getting covered. The light over there is just disappearing because the clouds are covering it, unfortunately. But I was hoping for the light to come, hit all these mountains here and create some beautiful textures in the mountain as they side light the mountain. I don't think that's going to happen, but it doesn't really matter. I'll still be able to find something got that shot and um, I'm just going to walk along here now 
and see what I can get further down, further down there. There's actually a tiny bit of snow on top of the mountains, but I think it's going to snow more tonight as well. So um, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I've just shot this scene here. You can see the rocks in the foreground and then the background rocks and the gorgeous sort of valley there. The light's not ideal, there's no doubt about it, um, but I'm just using the textures and the shapes to try and shoot it. And the thing that to remember is when you're shooting something like this in such wind is you're gonna have long exposures in, uh, in the morning, even though it looks quite bright to the eye. Um, and you know, I was shooting at four or five second exposures. So I've got my bag hung on my tripod to try, try and create a, a heavier um, stability to the tripod. And then I'm also shooting it at ISO 64 and ISO 400 and ISO 800, so that at least I'm gonna have a sharp shot. <laughs> um, you know, it might be a slightly noisy one, but I'm just sort of edging my bets really. I don't wanna go back and then see that all my six, ISO 64 shots, I've got a slight bit of movement in them. Because even if I inspect them on the back of the camera, I can't see perfectly until I get back into Lightroom. But it's so rugged up here, so, so beautiful. You know, just the movement of the clouds over there is just beautiful. Oh, I just love it. So good. Okay, it's about 20 minutes after sunrise. And I think there's starting to be a little bit of action over here. Um, so I'm going back to the first shot I did pre-sunrise. And I'm going to try and get it again. Because I think the light is a little bit better now. So I'm just going to find out where I was now. Oh, it's looking good. Over there. Okay, so it's getting interesting now. You can probably see... In fact, the clouds are coming right in over there. We're getting some sort of rain clouds coming over. So we've got dark clouds. We've got this beautiful sort of golden horizon. No light on this foreground, but the light is actually quite nice. It's got a sort of a warm tone to it. Always pay attention to how the light changes and just gets reflected off things. But I think it's got a warm tone to it. So these rocks in the foreground look quite good. We've got these rocks. We've got the water that's in quite a lot of rain cloud now. So it's looking quite dark and then this golden horizon. I've got a bracket and focus stack, so it's a little bit of a tricky shot, but I'm doing F11 and um, taking three shots for focus and three shots for exposure. So that's nine shots in total, and I'll stick them all together in Lightroom. Still no light on the foreground, which is such a shame, but I found this little scene here, these grasses. I was just walking past through these grasses and I thought, oh, these will make a good shot. And I was looking in that direction because this is where what's called the lion and the lamb is, this big rock formation. But by looking just in the other direction, then you can just get such amazing things. So this grass just sets off the foreground. You know, it's not too complicated. Your eye can lead into the scene. You lead into then these, to these two rocks either side and then through the scene to the um lock the sort of lock the the tarn in the background and then the water coming out of it what's really good is the clouds have improved the clouds have got a nice color to them a nice shape to them so i've just waiting to get sort of the perfect clouds above it because that'll sort of help the composition don't just take the shot and think i've got it wait for you know some good clouds to come through so i'll go back wait for those clouds and you'll see the image and then I think I'm going to go down because I don't think we're going to get any light. I think the clouds are just continuing to come over. Um, but it is, I've been up now, actually I'll probably stay for a bit longer, it's an hour after sunrise. Uh, so yeah, I'll stay for another hour I think. I'm 
I'm just on my way down now. I thought I'd just say that that was just amazing. Okay, I didn't get the light, but I was there, I was prepared. I had loads of time. I felt much more relaxed about it, actually. If I had got the light, I think I would have you know, got a good shot. But I, compared to the morning before, where it was rushed, I just found one lucky composition. But if I'd have just been prepared that morning before, I'd have got something super, super special. I'm not saying it wasn't a great shot. I was really pleased with it, but I felt like I didn't get the most out of that ama those amazing conditions. So, you know, the moral of the story is just get up an extra hour earlier, basically, or go out an extra hour earlier in the evening. Um, stop hitting that snooze button. Okay, I think I'm gonna take a picture of this tree with the background, probably zoomed in a little bit. I won't take the sky. I'll leave you with that photo. That's it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's two contrasting um, sunrises. One was great, but I didn't get there early enough. One wasn't so great, but I was prepared. Just need to combine those and I'll nail it. Thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, bye.